ABC 7 News. Nobody is more on this story or has been than our friend Casey Pratt, who uh, is fresh off getting swole. Yeah, arm day or leg day, you think, for Casey? Yeah, Casey, arm or leg day? Uh, Yesterday was back, Mm. and today was chest day. Yeah. Getting the pecs built up, you know? Mm. Mm. (laughs) Now, when, when uh, when you were doing your supersets, were you doing the whole, like, ha! (laughs) <laughs> Fisher, were you, were you, did you have a little extra motivation this morning? Yeah, I was up till about 1.30 a.m. listening to the Nevada legislative session close, but I was at the gym first thing in the morning, and I'm not a big grunt guy, but I was definitely a laugh guy today. I talked to somebody that, uh, by the way, Casey Pratt, everybody. I talked to somebody <laughs> that uh, is in the know down there, uh, and – they said to me during a break, quote, the Las, the A's to Las Vegas deal is over, is, excuse me, is dead as we know it. Based on what you know, do you concur? Oh, man. You know, I don't put anything by Las Vegas and Nevada because they're so quick and so eager sometimes and so able to get to yes that uh, I think people out here in California even envy them. Um, so I'm not going to say it's over, it's dead. I think as we know it, mm-hmm. sure, it could be dead. Um, but I don't think that this is the end for Las Vegas by any means. What I actually think they should do is look at this very closely and see how willing Las Vegas and Nevada were to make something happen and to push through a deal, even with all the bungling on the A's part for Major League Baseball and say that is a market we want expansion in and go that route. Right. Yeah, I think all along, Casey, that was kind of my thought. Like, I get maybe the A's desire to possibly get to Vegas, but Vegas would be inheriting, one, right now a team that's not very good, ownership that's, you know, getting a lot of grief, where I think on their own, had they have their own time and their own timetable and they could present to Major League Baseball, look, we could do this, do this our way, do it right, and have our own new thing. Why wouldn't that be what Vegas wants to do? Yeah, I think that it's made sense all along for me as as a expansion market. I think that's what they would want to do. I think what the A's represented to Las Vegas, though, was the quickest and potentially cheapest way for them yeah. to get to Major League Baseball because if they were able to pass this bill, you know, Major League Baseball had been hinting all along they would waive a relocation fee, and an expansion fee is expensive. It's essentially the cost of buying a team up front and then building the stadium. If they could have gotten the A's with the waived relocation, it would have been quicker and a lot cheaper. But it would not have been their own, and they would have been saddled with a ownership group that has proven time and time again they're not willing to invest or do what it takes to win. Casey Pratt with us. Casey, you know, a question that we've often tried to answer, and you can shed hopefully some light on this or not, is John Fisher. And what what is his ultimate, ultimate goal? I I thrown it out earlier it, it, it seems that John wants to do whatever deal he does and then sell off this team at some point for a large profit. But do you see John as a guy that could still be owning this team in 10 years? What's your read on him? I think that I would love to have at least five minutes to ask John Fisher an actual question, Yeah, mm-hmm. let alone see him in person, uh, seeing as how he's trying to close two massive deals, one in Oakland, one in Las Vegas for a lot of public money. Uh, It would be great if somebody, anybody, heck, it doesn't have to be me. If he'll hop on with you guys, I'd happily listen to it. Uh, He doesn't answer any questions. So nobody knows what he really wants. All we know is what Dave Cavill says, and he's invisible lately too. Um, And and it's hard to believe a lot of the things Dave Cavill says based on what he's been saying this whole whole time. So I don't know. I really don't know what his real motivations are. But if I had to guess, if if you looked at all the evidence, Um, I would say he's looking to get a deal and get out because uh, he's putting nothing into the team. He's basically spending only what the TV deal gives them on the roster. Um, There's a long history of moves that he's made that shows that he might be financially in trouble. If you look at him not paying rent on the Gap stores, him not paying rent on the Coliseum, him taking loans out on the A's and the Quakes, uh, not giving food to minor leaguers. I mean, I could just go on and on and on. There's a lot of evidence here, right? Well, and then that begs the question that I, uh, because I agree with you, Casey. I think he's looking to close a deal, get the valuation rise like Mark Davis did, for example, with the Raiders in Vegas, wherever it may be, and then sell this thing off. That said, if I'm Dave Cavill, 
I'm advising John Fisher to, uh, why would John not announce that? Do, and, and, and am I wrong? Again, you're the expert on this to think that both Oakland and Vegas might actually be even further motivated to do a deal if they knew that John Fisher was not going to be the long-term steward of this club. Why doesn't he go public? You know, you would think that would be a major selling point for people in the market, but it probably wouldn't be for him. I think he probably sees himself as some type of savior or white knight trying to do something noble here. and Or maybe he just can't legally say, hey, I'm going to get this deal and then immediately dump it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, maybe there, there might be legal ramifications. I'm not a lawyer. Uh, so it's hard to say exactly. But, I mean, I, I think you're right on the money. I mean, that would be a popular message these days because, unfortunately for him, the moves he's made have, been very unpopular casey on oakland side of things here obviously for the short term whether this is more damaging than what it seems to be or not we don't know but uh for vegas's future in the A's. so what is oakland's next move counter do they have to do anything is that or have they already laid all their cards out on the table what does the the community in the city of oakland uh, have to do now well I actually have a sit-down interview with the mayor scheduled today. Hey. Keep an eye out for that. We're going to get a lot of those answers. Um, all that being said, I think they've been very clear about what their offer is. You know, a lot of the time here, it, it was all very much spelled out what Oakland had on the table. It was never really spelled out what the A's were really willing to, to agree to, right? So the A's situation in Oakland is is largely known. I mean, Oakland feels they have a deal that's 90% complete. They know they have $375 million in offsite infrastructure funds raised through grants with $100 million more pending. Uh, we'll find out about some of that coming up here in June. Um, that's more money than Las Vegas was offering right there, not to mention they have the on-site infrastructure deal with the, the county to help the A's pay back that as well. So they know they have a deal on the table. They know it was about 90% there. The question is, does John Fisher have the resources to finish that deal or does he need to sell to give them an opportunity? Because it was you, Carmichael, Dave, that made this point, And I thought it was so salient when we spoke on the radio that, you know, this this Kings franchise was sold off to a Seattle owner. But once the team hit the market, that's when the window opened. And, and I think that's kind of what's going to have to happen here, too. Absolutely. Casey Pratt joining us. And that's 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 right. And that's why. It is curious why John, and who knows, maybe John's having conversations. We can get an announcement. This is the age. We can get an announcement in two days True. that he sold the team to, uh, you know, the Saudi public investment fund <laughs> while they bought the golf stuff too. Here, here, you kind of answered this, uh, uh, Casey, in your, in your, in your last, in what you were just saying. But we, when, when the Oakland deal quote unquote collapsed and the whole Vegas thing, I, I did make the comment that I don't know the mayor of Oakland. Um, and, and this is no disrespect, but any politician that is savvy at all in that situation is going to very loudly and publicly say to anyone that will put a microphone in front of them, we're here, we're done, this thing is pretty much done, we're ready to go, they chose to leave, blah, 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 because they win-win. Uh, A's fans can't be mad because, hey, we're here, and people against the deal can't be mad because it's not being done. So long-winded way of me asking you, is the Howard terminal deal, should Dave Cavill and, and Fisher come back tail between the legs, is the Howard terminal deal from Oakland's side, is it as close to being done as the mayor is is, is leading us to believe? I would say yes, it okay. is. Okay. Um, all they need is a willing partner <laughs> yeah, <laughs> to, get it, right. to get it done. Uh, you know, you can't make a deal with somebody that doesn't want a deal. Um, and, and I'm not sure what the A's really want at this point in time. They went from you know, wanting 50 acres and ancillary development and all these other things to just wanting nine acre ballpark on the strip. And if they just want a nine acre ballpark, they could build it at Howard terminal really fast without having to fight over affordable housing or any of those other things. Uh, back to the mayor, you know, the mayor walked away from the table when the Vegas news leaked. And I said it the second it happened when everybody was freaking out and the world was burning down around A's Twitter that I thought it was a smart move because you just saw what happened, right? She wouldn't let, Oakland be used as a leverage chip in Las Vegas and now that Las Vegas deal is in shambles so I think that was a smart move but also the city had to step away and kind of let this process play out because getting in the mix and making a lot of noise sort of ruins that whole <laughs> not using us as leverage angle right so yep. I think now that 6-5 has passed and the legislative session is closed you're going to start hearing a lot more noise out of Oakland there's absolutely nobody 
uh, on the story more than Casey and just peeling the curtain back. I, I gave him very short notice this morning. He was kind enough to join us. We appreciate that. Yes. And the fact that he's ready, willing, and able to talk about this subject uh, with anyone anywhere as listeners, as A's fans, I want you to appreciate what Casey does because, first off, it's a lot of time. And you might argue, well, he's plugging his Twitter, he's plugging his content. And that's all true. That's our jobs. But at the same time, a media member that is willing to take the time, be up all night, listen to these boring ass council meetings, then come out <laughs> the next day and report on them. That is part of what happens, what goes into saving a team or at least, um, trying to save a team is making sure that you all we all are educated uh and motivated and understand the real score you can go on his twitter account casey pratt that's two t's abc7 that's at casey pratt abc7 uh and you can catch his interview with the mayor of Oakland yeah. later today we always appreciate your time my friend and uh, i sure i really truly hope this uh this this ending is similar to our ending with the uh, sacramento kings and so far there's been a lot a lot of a lot of similarities from inept ownership to a uh, failed deal. So we'll keep our fingers crossed. Yeah. You know, I always got time for you guys. I was in the middle of my extensive stretching routine. So I'm 40 now. <laughs> you know, I can't, I can't be pulling muscles in the middle of things. So I got the message. I was like, let's blast through these sets and let's get on there. Cause I got to be there for the guys, you know, <laughs> love it. Let's go. The small Casey Pratt. Joining <laughs> us. Have a good day, brother. Talk to you soon. Have a good one, guys. Thank you. Too. That's Casey. Well, that'll be good to see the follow-up, though, with the mayor. Uh, very what, he, what he uncovers today. Uh, we'll make sure to look at that, and then uh, we'll have clips for that uh, uh, from that uh, on tomorrow morning's program. We'll take a break. When we come back, news and notes.